It's time for the three question warp for Farm Basics 5. Let's get going. What are the three different mechanisms cells employ to break down proteins? So there's ubiquitin, uh, and that's a mechanism with ubiquitin protein ligase. Proteins can be broken down in the lysosomes. And then there are the calcium dependent enzymes as well. Next question, which medication fits each of the following descriptions? Uh, so the first one we have here is uh, opioid cough suppressant commonly used with the expectorant guafenesin. That's going to be dextromethorphan. So that's the DM in uh, every other over-the-counter thing uh, that you find, like Robitussin DM. Opioid used in the treatment of diarrhea. That's going to be loperamide or diphenoxalate. Opioid receptor antagonist. That's going to be naloxone or naltrexone. Non-addictive weak opioid agonist. That's going to be tramadol and partial opioid agonist that's, uh, that causes a lot less uh, respiratory depression, that's going to be uh, butorphanol. Next question. Your patient has facial angiofibromas, ash leaf spots of skin depigmentation, a history of seizures, and mental retardation. What condition does this patient have and what neoplasms is this patient at risk of developing? So this is a classic scenario for tuberous sclerosis. And then what neoplasms are we worried about here? We're worried about a cardiac rhabdomyoma, astrocytoma, an angiomyolipoma. So make sure you know all of those. All right, so that's going to be it for the warm-up. Let's go to that lecture now. Before we get started with this video on neurotransmission, I want to address my reputation around here. Dr. Jenkins, well, he's the founder of the company. He's kind of like the elder statesman at DIT. And Dr. Lewis is known as the funny one, which is all well and good, but I can be funny too. No, really. Here, let me prove it. See? Comedy gold! In this video, we're going to continue talking about the autonomic nervous system, but instead of focusing on the effects of sympathetic stimulation and parasympathetic inhibition and all of that, now we're going to take a closer look at these neurotransmitters and how they're actually made and how they get released and what happens to them once they're released. So we're going to look at the nerve terminals of the autonomic nervous system, starting with the cholinergic nerve terminal. Now, this gets a little complicated and there's a lot of information here, but you definitely, definitely need to know this for your test. So let's look at this at number four in your study guide, and we're going to be labeling this image in the study guide. So how does acetylcholine get released? Well, it starts off with the synthesis of acetylcholine. So here in the upper right, you have two things coming into the presynaptic cell. The first thing being choline. Choline is essential to making acetylcholine. Then how does choline get into the cell? Well, there's a sodium co-transporter that brings both choline and sodium into the cell. So the substance that actually drives the transport of choline into the cell is sodium. And this co-transporter can be inhibited by a drug called hemicholinium. So hemicholinium inhibits the transport of choline. Now, once choline is in the cell, this choline is going to bind to acetyl-CoA. And the enzyme that facilitates this binding is choline acetyltransferase. So choline acetyltransferase takes acetyl-CoA and choline and makes acetylcholine. And that acetylcholine gets packaged into a vesicle. Now, there's a drug that inhibits the packaging of acetylcholine into vesicles, and that drug is vesamicol. So when vesamicol is around, acetylcholine cannot be packaged into a vesicle. So then the presynaptic cell is going to store this acetylcholine in vesicles until it's needed. So what needs to happen for the acetylcholine to be released into the synapse? Well, the substance that's essential for that process is calcium. We're going to see calcium throughout the course. Calcium is very important to biological processes. So let's talk about a few of the things that calcium does in the body. So here we see calcium is required for exocytosis to trigger the release of vesicles, not just in the cholinergic cells, but in all different types of cells. For the most part, vesicles don't get released without calcium. It's an important mechanism throughout the body. Calcium is obviously important for muscle contraction. Uh, calcium, in a sense, plays a huge role in regulating blood flow and blood pressure because you need calcium for smooth muscle contraction in the vessels to clamp down on arterioles and divert blood away from certain capillary beds. And calcium is essential for platelet functioning and for the activation of the clotting cascade. All right, so we release acetylcholine into the synapse. Well, there are a few things that can inhibit or stimulate the release of acetylcholine into the synapse. So what can stimulate the release of acetylcholine? Well, black widow spider toxin is one worth knowing. So with black widow spider toxin, uh, your synapse is going to be flooded with acetylcholine. And that's going to cause a spastic paralysis. So black widow spider toxin can flood the synapse with acetylcholine. And then one toxin that can inhibit acetylcholine release would be botulinum toxin. So botulinum toxin can inhibit acetylcholine release into the synapse. So with this, you'd have a flaccid paralysis. You can't contract your muscles without acetylcholine stimulating the nicotinic receptors in your muscles. And then the diagram says four fates of acetylcholine. 
So you successfully release acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft. What happens next? Well, one of four things can happen to acetylcholine. It can do what it's intended to do, which is bind to its postsynaptic receptor. Second, it can bind to an autoreceptor on the presynaptic cell, which regulates further acetylcholine release. Third, it can simply diffuse away from the synaptic cleft. And the fourth thing that can happen to acetylcholine, it can be degraded by acetylcholine esterase, which cleaves acetylcholine into choline and acetate. That choline can be recycled and transported back into the cell by the sodium cotransporter. And then what drug category would inhibit this cholinesterase from degrading acetylcholine? The cholinesterase inhibitors, like neostigmine. So how important is it for you to know this diagram and these different things that can affect acetylcholine? Well, it's at least a three-star topic, so it's probably worth your time. Let's move on to the noradrenergic nerve terminal next. Now, in order to understand what's going on in the noradrenergic nerve terminal, we need to go over the steps in catecholamine synthesis. So let's look at number five in your study guide, and I want you to write in the important enzymes and cofactors in this pathway. Starting with the end in mind, what are you trying to make? You're trying to make epinephrine or norepinephrine. So where do you start? You start with an amino acid. Which amino acid? It's phenylalanine. So you start with phenylalanine, and that phenylalanine is converted to tyrosine. What enzyme does that? It's an important enzyme to know. It's phenylalanine hydroxylase. And if you're deficient in phenylalanine hydroxylase, what disease does that lead to? It leads to PKU or phenylketonuria. We're going to talk about PKU a little bit more in the biochem section. All right, so you've made tyrosine. Then you convert tyrosine to DOPA, and the enzyme here is tyrosine hydroxylase. So make sure you know that enzyme too. Then you can convert DOPA to dopamine by way of the enzyme DOPA decarboxylase. And an important cofactor here is vitamin B6. And then dopamine is converted to norepinephrine. And this requires vitamin C as a cofactor. Then norepinephrine is used to make epinephrine. So those are all the steps of catecholamine synthesis. Now let's apply that to our noradrenergic nerve terminal, which is where norepinephrine is released. So this is number six in your study guide. So we start out by bringing tyrosine into the cell. And tyrosine comes into the cell using a sodium cotransporter again, using the extracellular sodium gradient to bring tyrosine in. Now once tyrosine is in the cell, we said that the enzyme that acts on it was tyrosine hydroxylase, and that forms DOPA. And there's a drug that can inhibit this step called metyrosine. Then from DOPA, you can go to dopamine, and the enzyme that catalyzes this is DOPA decarboxylase. So DOPA decarboxylase converts DOPA to dopamine. Then dopamine is converted to norepinephrine, and norepinephrine is packaged in the vesicle. Then there's a drug that can inhibit this packaging of norepinephrine in the vesicle called reserpine. So reserpine inhibits this step. And what substance causes vesicles to fuse with the cell membrane and release the contents of the vesicle into the synapse? Again, that's calcium. All right, so norepinephrine is now in the synapse. What are some of the substances that can stimulate this norepinephrine release? Well, one thing is amphetamines. Some amphetamines will facilitate the release of norepinephrine into the synapse. Ephedrine will do this also. So amphetamine, ephedrine, and then one other substance worth writing in would be tyramine. So the three substances I want you to know that can facilitate norepinephrine release into the synapse are amphetamine, ephedrine, and tyramine. And then what can inhibit this? Well, the two drugs here I want you to know are guanethidine and bertillium. Bertillium is a potassium channel blocker used as an antiarrhythmic for heart rhythm disorders. And one of the things it can do is inhibit the release of norepinephrine vesicles. Now, we talked about the four possible fates of acetylcholine. Well, what are the different fates of norepinephrine? Well, norepinephrine can bind to one of the adrenergic receptors in the postsynaptic cell. These are the alpha-1, beta-1, or beta-2 receptors. It can potentially bind to a presynaptic autoreceptor, which are the alpha-2 autoreceptors. Alpha-2 stimulation will inhibit further norepinephrine release. And what are some of the other receptors in the presynaptic noradrenergic cell that regulate the release of norepinephrine? Well, one is the M2 muscarinic receptor. So muscarinic acetylcholine receptors would inhibit norepinephrine. That makes sense. If you have parasympathetic muscarinic activity going on, you would want to try to inhibit norepinephrine activity. And then the receptor that's going to stimulate norepinephrine release would be the angiotensin II receptor. So angiotensin II is kind of a sister molecule to norepinephrine in this way. So angiotensin II is going to facilitate norepinephrine release. All right, so those are two fates of norepinephrine. It can bind to the postsynaptic receptor, or it can bind to a presynaptic autoreceptor. Then the third thing that can happen is reuptake. One of the main ways that norepinephrine gets out of the synapse is it gets taken back up by the presynaptic cell. And there are a couple of substances that inhibit this reuptake that are worth knowing. One is cocaine, and another is TCAs, or tricyclic antidepressants. 
So both cocaine and TCAs inhibit norepinephrine reuptake. So a lot of the blanks of this diagram are clinically relevant. Understanding this helps you understand why cocaine makes the heart race and raises the blood pressure. It explains why we give TCAs or amphetamines to certain patients and why ephedrine supplements and energy drinks and appetite suppressants can be dangerous, why tyramine can cause hypertensive crisis in patients that are on certain medications. So what's the fourth thing that can happen to norepinephrine? Well, norepinephrine can be metabolized, not necessarily within the synapse, but there are a couple of enzymes that do metabolize norepinephrine. So one of these enzymes is catechol o methyltransferase or COMT. So the thing I want you to know about this is that it methylates norepinephrine. It's a methyl transferase. It transfers a methyl group onto norepinephrine. Another enzyme that can metabolize norepinephrine is monoamine oxidase, or MAO. So it oxidizes norepinephrine. So the methyl transferase is going to methylate norepinephrine. Monoamine oxidase is going to oxidize norepinephrine. Now, both of these reactions are going to make norepinephrine unusable as a neurotransmitter. So if you have a pheochromocytoma, an adrenal tumor that's making lots of catecholamines like dopamine and norepinephrine and epinephrine. These two enzymes, COMT and MAO, are going to convert those catecholamines to things like metanephrine, normetanephrine, and VMA, which you can test for in the urine to help you make the diagnosis. Specifically, these enzymes convert dopamine into HVA or homovanillic acid. They convert norepinephrine into VMA or vanillyl mendelic acid, and they convert epinephrine into metanephrine. You're going to hear more about those byproducts when we get to pheochromocytoma in the endocrine section. And you'll also hear about these enzymes again when we get back to neurology and we talk about Parkinson's disease because in Parkinson's disease you have a deficiency of dopamine in the brain. And we sometimes give drugs that inhibit COMT and MAO as a way to raise dopamine levels in Parkinson's patients. And monoamine oxidase inhibitors, or MAOIs, are also a category of antidepressants. It's not really used much anymore. But you can see how monoamine oxidase inhibitors are going to keep epinephrine around longer. So again, it's very important to understand both the catecholamine synthesis pathway and also the drugs that regulate the release and degradation and reuptake of norepinephrine from the nerve terminal. All right, we're almost to the end. But before we do the end of session quiz, let's have a quick whiteboard review. In this whiteboard review, I've listed several drugs and toxins on the left, and we're going to match them up with their actions on the autonomic nerve terminals. The first one here is amitriptyline, which is a tricyclic antidepressant, a TCA. And we said that those inhibit norepinephrine reuptake. The next one is amphetamine, which we said stimulates norepinephrine release. Then we have black widow spider toxin, which stimulates acetylcholine release. Botulinum toxin inhibits acetylcholine release. Bertillium inhibits norepinephrine release. Cocaine inhibits norepinephrine reuptake. Guanethidine inhibits norepinephrine release again. Hemicholinium inhibits choline transport. And you can remember the choline and hemicholinium. It's pretty obvious. Reserpine inhibits the packaging of norepinephrine into vesicles. And vesamicol Again, the coal tells you it inhibits packaging of acetylcholine into vesicles. So, all right, you did a great job on that one. And for your reward, since we mentioned amphetamine, I'm going to draw you a little Heisenberg. All right, now it's time for the end of session quiz. So go ahead and work through those questions, and then we'll go through the answers. All right, first question. Which three enzymes are required to convert phenylalanine to dopamine? Well, you need phenylalanine hydroxylase to convert phenylalanine to tyrosine. You need tyrosine hydroxylase to convert tyrosine to dopa. And you need dopa decarboxylase to convert dopa to dopamine. Next, the patient develops paralysis after being bitten by a black widow spider. Is this a spastic or a flaccid paralysis? And what other autonomic symptoms might be seen? So remember, black widow spider toxin stimulates the release of acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter at the neuromuscular junction. So that causes muscle spasms and possibly some spastic paralysis. And the other symptoms might include salivation, diaphoresis, lacrimation, all from excess acetylcholine. So everything gets leaky. Next, what substances inhibit the reuptake of norepinephrine? We said cocaine and tricyclic antidepressants, TCAs. And the last one, what substances stimulate the release of norepinephrine from neurons? We said it's calcium, because that's the normal trigger for the release of norepinephrine. And then also amphetamines, and ephedrine, and tyramine. All right, I'll see you next time.